Our first item on the agenda this evening is a city case. It is city case number CU-2015-04, Albert Sloan. Matt, if you will present that, please, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, this is a request by Albert Sloan for a conditional use permit for the event center in CD zoning, that stands for downtown commercial. Excuse me, Matt, I'm sorry. I'd just like to reduce myself from the case, conflict of interest, so I'm just going to join the audience. Okay, Commissioner Glavin. Thank you. The subject property is uh, commonly known as the City Market Building, uh, located at the northeast corner of North Patterson Street and East Hill Avenue. Um, you have maps in your packet. There's a map on the uh, display screen for the audience. Um, it's a three-story building, historic in nature. This is in the local historic district of the downtown core, uh, which means it's also on the Downtown Commercial National Register of Historic Places District. Uh, is also within the boundaries of the Central Valdosta Development Authority. Uh, Three-story building, the applicant is requesting approval um, for the event center on the first and second floors. This is in addition to other uses that may otherwise be allowed in the CD zoning. Um, third floor would remain vacant um, for the time being. Um, it's a fairly large building, it's 9,000 square feet on each floor. Um, in your packet is some copies of floor plans. It shows some empty space, and like we talked about at the work session, um, the last page of your packet is a floor plan from a meeting um, in January of this year where someone was contemplating a restaurant for the first floor that had 300 seats. That is simply shown to you as a way of showing scale of the building um, to give you an idea of how much it could hold. Um, they are proposing to have um, large events or potential for large events or mixed sizes. Um, no alcohol beverages that would be licensed for the site. Any events that have those would be catered by licensed alcoholic beverage caterers. Um, there's a kitchen on the first floor that is not intended that this be a restaurant, simply an event space uh, for weddings and birthday parties, family reunions, <coughs> music concert events, things of that nature. Um, staff's general concerns about this is the downtown uh, parking situation. Uh, we do not require parking on site for any of the uses. The CD zoning district is exempt from that. Um, there is an abundance of shared or public parking. Um, however, with an event center that may attract a couple hundred people or more, um, there is the potential to literally just gobble up the parking um, around the area. Um, applicants are proposing for the large events to have ballet parking. Um, to take advantage of the large public lots that are within a couple blocks. Um, the concern is just during the daytime, and those are reflected there in the conditions of approval. Um, applicants are here. We've had two members of the public contact our office asking some general questions. Um, I do not know if they are here, Mr. Chairman. I did not see them the last time I glanced through the audience, but there are a number of people here. Um, so with that in mind, um, the other concern being that of noise, the um, city has a noise ordinance which would take care of a lot of these concerns um, as far as limiting spillover of noise outside of the premises. A copy of the provisions is there in your packet. Um, so with that, staff is recommending approval after finding this request consistent with the conditional use review criteria, but recommending approval with these four conditions. The first one, conditional use approval shall be granted for an event center and CD zoning on the first and second floors only. Other uses permitted in CD zoning will still be allowed for potentially mixed-use building. Number two, the property shall be excluded from its own alcoholic beverage consumption license. There shall be no brown bagging on the premises. And in any alcoholic beverage served at events shall be from a licensed alcoholic beverages caterer. Number three, events with more than 200 persons during Monday through Friday, excluding state holidays, shall not begin until after 5 p.m., and all events shall conclude by no later than 1 a.m. And lastly, conditional use approval shall expire after five years from the date of approval if no business license for the event center is requested and approved by that time. I'm glad to answer any questions you may have. Commissioners, do we have any questions for staff on this agenda item tonight? Mr. Bolton? Matt, well, <clears throat> what is the access to the second floor map? I've been in there a couple times and I remember it being an older building. So. Uh, let's see, there is the second floor, first floor. You see 
Uh, the bottom of the screen is the uh, west side of the property as you come in from the sidewalk on Patterson. There are two stairwells. Um, in the lower left is a stairwell that goes up to the upper floors. And in the back right is another stairwell as well as a freight elevator. Um, that is one of the concerns when they go through the permitting process. Um, even with these stairwells, which are rather large, they can't accommodate a good-sized crowd on the second floor. There we go. Um, the estimation is probably a limit of 300 per, 350 person occupancy in that second floor, assuming it remains open. Um, the applicants have not gone through the architectural layout planning process yet, um, nor engineering, you know, for how ingress and egress and other systems of the building will work. Um, they're looking to get the use approved before they expend those. Um, but it is a very good building. Um, it is sprinkled throughout on all three floors. Um, I have been in the building. Um, it needs some TLC. It has been empty for a little while. It used to be a department store. Um, it is used to holding a fairly large amount of weight and large numbers of people. Um, it's just it's going to have to comply with current codes in terms of fire department and even life safety codes. Any other questions? Right, right. I just want a clarification on this item two and under the conditions where the property should be excluded from its own. Does that mean that they will not be licensed to serve alcoholic beverages there? Not as its own facility. It just means if they have alcoholic beverages at an event, those be provided by a licensed alcoholic beverage caterer. It would be catered. Correct. Know, they can have a license, but they're not going to be able to serve there. Correct. Okay, I just want to make sure I understood what I was Now, they would not have their own license. It's just the caterer would have the license. Um, and under the city ordinances, each event such as that is approved individually by the city manager. Right. That's what I was saying. All right. Thank you. Any questions for staff? And Commissioner, one further thought on that. It being an example of a present, which is an event center, has events sometimes with alcoholic beverages. It does not have its own license. So this would be sort of functioning in that same manner. Well, that say this said it would be excluded from its own license. Correct. That's what threw me. It has a license, but it's excluding itself. Yeah, I didn't want it to exclude having the beverages just on its own license. I, I understand now, thank you. There being no more questions at this time, we will ask anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor of this request to come forward and state your name and your address for the record, please. Good evening. State your name and address for the record, please. Good evening. I'm Renee Parker. I live at 2608 Rolling Hill Park. My name's Greg Moore. I live at 507 Georgia Avenue. We're here tonight representing the owner of uh, Howard Sloan. Uh, we're working with him on this project for an events center. Um, we were working on the project and then referred by the uh, Main Street director uh, in regards to the building in the Green Georgia. It's also a press building. Um, it's roughly half the size, uh, but it is the Architecture is pretty much the same. It's a two-story building, however, uh, for event space there. Uh, Renee visited the building, and since then, we've been working on the plans um, uh, for this building. We feel like it, it'll be a complement to downtown. Uh, with the first uh, majority of the events will be on the first floor. We'll offer the first and second floor um, for event space. The first floor will um, lend itself for more um, elegant style um, events with the high ceilings. There's uh, 16 foot ceilings there. The second floor will be more of a uh, casual, casual um, elegant, yeah, casual elegance <laughs> is the term that our designers have thrown out. So um, um, with that said, we feel like it'll, um, it'll be a good um, complement to downtown and the existing buildings. Um, and we're trying to work with the city as much as possible. The only thing that we would ask is consider uh, an increase to the number of persons that could be at events Monday through Friday before 5 p.m. Um, 
Renee's background is event um, management and event sales uh, with another hotel chain in town, and she feels that uh, we would have some benefits to that. And I'll let her not me on, on uh, why we're asking for that and how uh, it would impact the parking or not impact the parking in this case uh, for this for this building. It's been my experience in working with in the hotel industry and in the event industry that the average size of business coming into Valdosta to do business, to have their conferences here over other cities in the region, is that typically we can accommodate about 300 to 350 people. At 200, that is limiting. The other side of that, of course, parking, it is also my experience that when people come to Valdosta for events, for their three-day conferences, when they bring their CEO into town and have meetings, when they converge on the event space, they rarely drive one vehicle per person. Usually they're carpooling two to four people, so that automatically cuts the number of vehicles down. And as Greg alluded, we will have the availability of valet parking to move those vehicles into parking areas in the city that aren't, that aren't currently being used very much at all during the weekend. I, I, I heard earlier, that, and I may have missed it, that they said that Madam Levy said that the second floor could accommodate 300. In the discussions about this building over the past few months, um, based on just size, area, the second floor, the ballpark number, it was I heard it was 350 mm -hmm. for the second floor. The number would be larger for the first floor. That's, that's what I was wondering. Do we have any idea what about the first floor? Um, probably five, six hundred or more. <clears throat> Depends on how it is arranged. Um, those are all calculations that are yet to be determined. It's going to be part of the permitting process. And what they actually present is the finished version of these floors. Um, but in terms of just the, the raw space, um, the 9,000 per floor, that is a gross floor area calculation. That includes all the interior walls and restrooms and storage rooms and things of that and stairwells. Um, so to keep that in mind as well. But 9,000 is pretty good size space to start with. Okay. On, on our estimates, um, with the plans we're looking at, we'll have somewhere between um, 5,000 and 5,500 square feet in the first floor of true event space. We'll have a caterer's prep room. Uh, that'll have a three basin sink, uh, and that's the only kitchen type equipment that it'll, it'll have. We've already met with the- uh, So no, no on-site preparation in? No on-site preparation. Um, they'll just be bringing in hot boxes and setting it up on tables if it is um, table service or buffet service, depending on how, um, how the clients choose to have their catering done. We've already met with the Lowndes County Health Department, and as long as there's no cooking on site, um, they said, you know, we're not involved. Um, you know, um, they don't have any inspections or anything like that. We will have to um, have any of them. As far as seating industry standards uh, on the 5,100 square feet that we're thinking uh, we'll approximately have downstairs, um, table seating, um, like um, round table seating for a buffet style meal, we could seat as many as 463. Um, if you want spacious classroom style seating, like at the meeting here tonight, 637 would be the industry standard. However, that um, it would be less than those numbers for us because of just the configuration of the actual building. So that's just a nice square room with, with no columns or anything. This this building is the spans between the columns are 15 by 20 and they're going to uh, we're going to uh, decorate them very ornately and complement the, the period of time when the building was built by the Crest uh, company. So um, you know, we're looking around 500 to 600 max to be a standing room type event on the first floor. However, um, for a seated dinner, we're, you know, we're looking at 350 to 400, 450 at max. Okay. So, there are four exits on the first floor. Uh, currently, there's the two on the front, one on the um, south side street exit, and then one exit out the back into the alley. So I'm just curious, I know you've done your homework, but where is the valley parking lot going to be? I'm just curious of that. We're going to utilize the city lot. And uh, there's one on Savannah Avenue, 
uh, off of Patrick, off of Ashley. There's also uh, there's one there's a small lot uh, between Ashley and Patterson, um, and then there's also a lot off of um, Ashley Street and Savannah. That all three are city lots that are underutilized, um, especially the one on uh, Savannah and Patterson. So, so any event before five, this wouldn't mess up cause congestion in those, in those lots. No, there's a, actually the, the main lot we'd like to use is over on Savannah and Patterson, right south of the uh, Southern Salvage Building, and it has um, 50 spaces um, in that lot. The one on Ashley and Savannah has 54. So uh, at, at two people, you know, we can easily accommodate um, 200 right there in those two lots without adding anything to the regular parking configuration in downtown. So what was your consideration on on, uh, on our, uh, our conditional use on number three where we had to put it at 200? What, what is your thoughts on that? Five, six hundred? Yeah. Um, I think like the one of one. Of one there. Yeah. <laughs> um, anywhere from 250 to 300 would be nice. Considering if we're going to bring that type of Events say those types of events into town and generate even more economic development through the downtown area. What I get requests for are 300 to 350 most of the time. If we can accommodate 350 people, we can win a lot of business development. Mr. Chairman, yes, sir. Uh, the fire department has a lot to say about occupancy, also. I mean, yeah, no, so I mean, you know, we can make a recommendation, but they're written in stone as to what can be. Put into the room. So this property was used previously um, for events on the on the second floor, and the fire the fire department number for occupancy was 344. So, that's just the second floor. That's just the second floor. So if we could, honestly, I mean, if we could come so, somewhere close to that for our daytime use. On our projections and from um, researching these event spaces across the country, one to two events during the week is, in, is the best optimum case we would have going forward. And it would take several, several years for us to ramp up to that. So, um, and, and we definitely, uh, part of our uh, business plan is the valley parking service uh, that we'll utilize. We want to be good neighbors with downtown. so. Um, we'll either add that into the cost or the, or the uh, renters will take that themselves. I don't know this has a lot to do with zoning decision, but, but given the, given the, the uh, traffic on Patterson and Hill, how exactly would you plan to violate park anybody? I mean, there's no on-street parking there pretty much all the time. I don't know where you'd even stop a car to violate. You could easily do it on Hill. Um, there's there's six spaces. It's, there's six spaces on the side of the building, as you see on the picture here. And we would we would calm those off, and they would pull in there, get out of the car, and then we would go up, we would drive straight. But you don't own the spaces, so there's no guarantee you could calm them off, right? No. And it would be an early morning deal, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and a legal deal, actually. Yeah. Chris, <laughs> would you have something? Yes, I did. Um, what about the third one? What's going to happen with it? Because we keep adding more and more if it happens to develop up top. What's the, what's, what's the plans for the third floor? As, as an event space right now, unless we add a elevator, passenger elevator, we have a freight elevator, but unless there's a passenger elevator to the third floor, that cannot be utilized. Um, with our plan, if you, if you rent the bottom floor um, or the second floor, then there's not a, there's not two events. You don't double up um, on events. So say somebody rents the second floor, um, then that's the only event you have in the space at the time. Um, the, the acoustics between the floors don't allow for multiple events. So if we did add event space to the third floor, that would just be a complement of renting the building. So it would limit it to the, to the bottom or second floor, um, those, those maximum capacities. Say, say the maximum capacity is 500 on the first floor. Well, if you rent the whole building, 
you know, we have we have space available in the third floor. Right now it's going to be storage. Um, we're going to offer tables and chairs and that's going to fill up that space a good bit. So, um, and at the Delavant in LaGrange, they actually have residential, uh, four residential apartments on their, their top floor. Um, but they found out that residential on top of an event space is not, it's, it doesn't work. If you live there, it's not good. No. Yeah. Any other questions, commissioners? Thank you. Is there anyone else here wishing to speak in favor of this request? Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Good evening. Uh, I'm Albert Song. I live at number 12 East Moore Tree, South Austin. And I have owned the city market for approximately eight years. And we have had a bid on the second floor here for, I think, seven years. And uh, as they said, the fire department has looked at this building multiple times. But there's two exits, as Greg said, one exit goes directly to the alley, feeds to the alley outside. And so they love this building. And what limits the capacity on that second floor is two three foot doors that you can go through. You can take 172 people through each door. So that's the limited capacity on the second floor. And the building is so large, when you have 344 people up there, if you, if we had more exits out of that, we could have five, six hundred people on that floor, like, like the other floor. Okay, uh, Brad, you asked about the valet parking. Uh, Central, Ad Central Alley is one way it's from the fourth house north south. And so that's a real good place to valet park there because based on the back, you know, with the uh, unload passenger there, so it's, it's, it's to have a, a stacking there for, for that can be, be there. And uh, also, I've uh, served on the Central Valley Office of Development Authority. We had a parking study done that says there's ample parking downtown, but the parking is sometimes away from the building, and that's part of the urban experience, is that you park away from the building, you walk by the small shops, you walk through the alley, you see the beauty of downtown. And we wouldn't want a building where we're in the center and are surrounded by parking lots because that's not the, the urban type thing that we're looking for. And uh, I've been downtown developing for, I guess, 14 to 15 years. And I've had my feet on the pavement there for a long time, and I, I understand it. But these small shops downtown are not doing well. They need more foot traffic. And this business is not competing with these shops because when people come here for conventions, then basically they can go over to Steel Magnolias, they can go to Blue Cafe, they can shop downtown. And what we need is a lot more people downtown. We don't need to limit the amount of people downtown. So, other questions that, that you might have, you know, for me as far as the building is concerned, the building, it, it has been approved. It has been used for, for many years. But the reason that we're not approved now it's because we rented it to the people, the city market that was using it as an event space on the second floor. Their lease was up last October. And the 1st of December, we rented the building to another group of people that were going to build a restaurant and bar. And they started asking to use the second floor as the building had been used for seven and a half years and were basically denied that use of the building. So now we're told that we're past the six month thing that hasn't been used, but the way I see that, I don't see it that way. So this building has been in continuous use for as far as I tell for about 100 years. What are you referring to when you say it's past the six month period? Okay. Well, see, when the city market moved out in October, and then the building was leased again, it was firmly leased in November, so there was one month that it wasn't leased. But then in December, there was a written lease, so they began the use of the building then. 
Uh, so then they began working with the city to submit plans for a restaurant and bar on the first floor. Well, with the restaurant and bar on the first floor, the second floor would be considered as, as like a, a big room in any restaurant. It would be a banquet room. And so they wouldn't have the, the bench space, so to speak. But they started asking and met with the city in, I think, March, February and March, to ask to use the second floor as it had been using been used for seven, seven years. <coughs> and so to me, we didn't have six months break in there, but these people lost their funding. And so they struggled, and so now they're not going to be able to go through their process. But me, as a building owner, how did I lose this? So, in all of these years there, I have never known of a complaint against the city market. Police, sound, any other thing. So we've been good neighbors there for seven years with this use. And, and, and like I said, the, the capacity is 344 people. I have seen 344 people sitting down dining on the second floor. Many of you probably been to parties there. I've been to a lot of parties there myself. The cities have parties there. The United Ways have parties there. The, the Moody Air Force Base, the squadrons have had, have had parties there. Many, many groups that have had parties there. There's been many weddings there. There's been bands there. The, the mayor used this space as a city party. Had Joe Grandson, a big orchestra type band that played on the second floor for a big city party on the second floor. Mm -hmm. Commissioner, any other questions for the presenter? Thank you, sir, very much. Thank you. Is anybody here wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward. Anybody here wishing to speak against this request? Please come forward at this time. appears to be no one wishing to speak against this request. Commissioners, is there any additional discussion we need to have amongst ourselves on this request? Mr. Chairman, I got one question if I may ask. May I ask? Yes, sir. On oh, no, no. uh, the city requirements as far as the fire department, whatever, what is the capacity on, uh, on the report to the fire department? What will the fire department allow? Well, you heard his numbers. The um, fire department had approved second floor for maximum occupancy of 344 um, and they are, know the codes as well in terms of just raw square footage um, you know five six hundred on the first floor so you had to get together the maximum capacity of the facility with both floors was 800 plus um, so there was hence the staff's concern about having a maximum capacity event going on during business hours yep. over the downtown so we felt there should be some limit in terms of sizes for events during the weekday daytime. Um, given that you know this, the public parking, which you know, member serves, there's I think over 1,500 public parking spaces in downtown. It's just they're not all real close to this building, um, and the concern is there would be some competing interest there. Uh, valet parking certainly will alleviate a lot of that. Um, they had mentioned the two lots that are nearby along Savannah Avenue, which are not as large as others. Um, the Lee Street lot has hundreds of parking spaces, and it is, you know, just off the top right corner of that map mm -hmm. on the screen. And through the alley system, not too long of a walk. So, so your concern is just that it's 100% Monday through Friday, prior to 5 o'clock? Prior to 5 o'clock, when Monday businesses, Friday. offices concern. in downtown are using public small quantities of the public parking within this area. Um, just, you know, I mean, it's designed for the small businesses to share that parking. It's just when you add several hundred people with vehicles potentially during that time frame in this space or this immediate area, it's, it's a competition thing. Um, now, this is, of course, a new thing um, in downtown. We've not had an event center of this size facility has tremendous potential to be a very, very good asset for downtown, um, but it's what we planners call pendulum use. It has also the potential to be 
a big negative for downtown, depending on how it is operated. Um, I'm convinced they will operate it in a very positive way. It's just a general concern for that. Um, and keep in mind, this is a conditional use approval. It is not carved in stone. Um, if they do see a time where they're getting requests for events that are larger, and they have a way to manage those events during the daytime very effectively, they could come back through and request amendment to these conditions. Same thing with the third floor. If they want to expand at a future date onto the third floor and include that in their event space <coughs> offering, there's potential for a roof deck you know, to be designed appropriately up there. Um, again, they could come back through the process <coughs> and amend the approval. Mr. What about hinging that number on what the fire department says instead of us arbitrarily putting 200? Uh, depend on what the fire department says. Well, we believe and we're pretty certain the fire department is going to grant a much higher number than 200. Well, yeah, well, that's why. Because that was hence the concern that the number could, for both floors, be 800 plus. Well, you, that, that's a lot of people. You want to meet them halfway? They, they said about 375. And, and 200 is not based on any science, it's just a, a, a rounded number. Um, I thought I was rounding up. 200 to me is a pretty good sized crowd. Well, yeah. But, you know, more than that, I'm okay with. Which of us? Um, man, I got one more uh, comment on number three. In the event you increase the number to go up, could we put a condition in? on those events, this is only going to be a couple of weeks that they must have an LA parking during that period of time as they addition to the, even though they say they're going to have it, when they have those during, if we're going to increase that number, they must have valet parking and must utilize the larger. Now, you could leave it as 200 without valet, greater numbers must have valet parking available. That would be one way to do it, to modify number three. Okay. Any other discussion on this? Mr. Rector? Yeah, my understanding is 200 would have to do with parking, not occupancy. Is that? It's a proportion of the capacity of the building. But again, it's not based on science. But, so yeah, but you mentioned the flexibility that if conditions were changed and accommodations made, that it's not going to be a lengthy process to get more people in there if they <coughs> ask for But well, yeah, if they want to amend any conditions, I mean, it's the same process that they've come through so six weeks. All the way back through all the Correct. Time. It would be a new review, new application at whatever point in the future. So it would be a little bit fresh. And I, you know, I feel certain they are planning and hoping to have events that are much larger than this and contemplating having those during evenings and weekends and providing valet parking for that number of people. I mean, if you, you know, do a tenth of a mile radius, you're not going to find this many parking spaces close to the building. So it's which is something they had planned and would want to do anyway. If I could reach back out to the audience and answer questions, that's not a problem with anybody. I'd like to reach back out and ask Greg a question, if you would. You can stand if you, if you don't mind standing where you're at, it'd be great. I'm just curious, and I know that Commissioner Willis had mentioned about Attaching to condition three about the event is greater than 200 that you require valet parking. Going forward, do you see that being an issue? No, we don't see it as an issue at all. Okay, thank you, sir. The other way to look at this is this is a market issue. And, you know, if an event comes and there's 700 people and they all have a bad experience, there's probably not going to be many more. Like that. <laughs> you know, so why, why don't we let, I, mean, I, I hate to get into arbitrary numbers, whether it's 200, 300, whatever. I mean, this is an urban area, there's parking lot, plenty of parking. You know, other businesses are going to have problems with this event center if they take up all their parking. And I don't know that that's a city issue. I mean, it's sort of a market issue to me, so just my two cents. Would it, would the, would it complement the other, it's just, would it, Complement the other small areas. So I don't think. foot traffic in if they need that. I don't think we're good. we might not be just dealing with just uh, the city market. I think it's going to complement the entire downtown if you bring several hundred people. 
25 or 30 of them that walks in shops in the shop. Yeah, it mirrors the rainwater center out there. They want those same type of things out there. People can walk or go to Gander Mountain or Academy Sports or several different eating establishments. The same, same principle. Okay. Any other discussion, commissioners? If there's no more discussion, I will take a motion at this time. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Williams. Um, I'd like to make a motion uh, that uh, since this is con consistent with the comprehensive plan, and uh, I'd like to make a motion that we recommend approval of this to the city council with condition number one as it is, number two as read by. Do I need to repeat these or can I? And they're they're written. Okay. okay, leave uh, condition one as it is, condition two as it is. Except for three on um, number three, I would like to see it increased to 350. And an addition to this number three, it's got to be that valet parking must be available at the time during the what's the time frame between prior to five o'clock. And number four left the sun. Would you clarify number three for me again? I okay. Increase the um, number of people to 350. Okay, so my, my, my question to you, if it exceeds 200, are then you requiring valet or the valet of the no, guards? I'm, I'm saying go ahead with the 350. If we're going to increase it to 350, we're going to have, if they go to 350, we've got to have valet parking. Anything above 200, it got to have valet that's, parking. That's what I look for. Anything oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, I see where you're going with that. Well, you have that? But with a max of 350. That's before 5 o'clock in the time period. Mm -hmm. In the other time, it's whatever the, it is. So I, I, I'm inclined to believe that there's going to be some, some larger crowds that's going to want to, to come. So that's, that's my opinion on that. So let me that's make, the motion if you want. Uh, let me just make, make yeah. sure I'm clear. Anything over 200, you've got to have valet parking up to 350. You want to cap the daytime hours at 350? We'll come up another 150 feet for daytime hours. Because there is going to be a lot more traffic out there during that period of time. Someone's going to be parking on the street, but hopefully by the valet parking it will accommodate everybody else. Yeah, you want to leave, <coughs> leave condition number four as stated. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have a motion on the floor. Do I have a second? I have a motion by Commissioner Willis and a second. All in favor of this, signify by raising your right hand. You don't do discussion? No. Do we need further discussion? No, I was just asking. <laughs> well, I think we discussed it pretty good. Okay. Uh, all in favor, signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? Brad, you want to stay on it? I voted for it. I see, okay. I'm sorry. I didn't see any of those. So that's a 6 0 on that, Carmel. 4 1. Oh, 1. That's correct. 6 0 1. That's correct. Thank you very much, Commissioners. And thank you for your time on this. Uh, our next case is evening.